What's going on YouTube? This is Necro Steve, and when it's time for week three, that's right, we're already three weeks into this wonderful season of the Indigo League of Legends. This new team that I drafted is really, really working out well, coming off the first two victories in the two weeks, opening up very, very strongly. Of course, for week three, we are up against Sketchy Smeargle, who is actually the coach of the, um, if I'm remembering, hold on, to the notes. Uh, yeah, Sketchy Smeargle. We actually, if you recall, if you watched season two of the Indigo League of Legends, we actually lost against him in grand finals of the playoffs. So some severe salt on my end. Uh, that was the season where I was using Mega Blaziken. Didn't quite pan out against Mega Metagross. And what do you know, Mega Metagross is back again on his side. But this time I have prepped very thoroughly for it. Out of my Megas, I chose my Mega Metacham, which could definitely um, one hit KO basically anything that he had. And with Fake Out for added priority in case he tried to go for Baton passing some speed around with Scalopede or something really speedy like Jolteon. Uh, in case he did try to set up, I did bring Scarf Ditto. And if he lacked Ice Punch, I have Zapdos. If he lacks the Thunder Punch, I have Vaporeon. So I have several checks there. And those both serve as good general checks for his Kirin Black, which is a huge monster. He also had access to Entei and Mian Shao. I actually figured he would bring at least one of those. So I have a um, Tornadus and a Fortress there, especially for the Mian Shao. Um, I figured he wouldn't bring his Weezing or his Quillfish there just because Poison is not a very strong option against my teammates. Sylveon is not really a, an, an annoying threat at all for my team. I guess if it somehow gets behind a substitute or gets up a Calm Mind, then it can wall break. But it's really too slow to threaten my team. And if he sets up at all with that, then I can bring in Ditto once again. So my mindset going into this was just make sure that he can't set up and sweep my team. If he tries to do any setting up, then I will bring Ditto in and copy those boosts and force him out. Um, I also really wanted to make sure I kept Medicham healthy. Uh, Medicham can outspeed a number of the Pokemon that he brought as long as I keep it healthy, even if he takes a little bit of priority from something like Donphan. Medicham can really do some work here. And so he starts off with Scallopede, which for me is just a huge red flag for a Baton Pass. I figured he also might have Toxic Spikes, especially since I didn't bring Drapion, but I do have Fortress to spin those away. Uh, he does go right for Protect. I just tried to use Fake Out here. I did bring a weird set with Fake Out, High Jump Kick, Zen Headbutt, and Substitute, since I figured I would be forcing a number of switches. Um, I did go for Fake Out there, just in case he didn't have Protect. I could break a Sash if he had it. Uh, he goes for a Poison Jab, which kind of alerts me to thinking that that might be his only offensive move. Because since he started off with Scallopede, I figured he had Baton Pass, so Protect, Baton Pass, and Poison Jab. I'm thinking the last move is Toxic Spikes, or might be Taunt, or something like that. Um, so since I went out into Fortress here, I'm going to get a chance to set up a boatload of entry hazards. And I'm not worried, because no matter what he passes to, I can just bring in Ditto. So Sketchy is actually going to stay in here and get up some Swords Dances. He has plus three or four speed, and he passes it all out to Metagross, of all things. Um, Metagross really, really struggles against spikes, so we're going to be setting those up. He comes in on two layers of spikes, and of course he has to break through Fortress is sturdy, and I have Rocky Helmet, so when I'm saying I have a lot of salt facing Sketchy's Mega Metagross, it is for a good reason. Now he goes for a bullet punch here. He actually did not have Meteor Mash. He was running like Hammer Arms and Headbutt Bullet Punch uh, type deal. So he didn't have Meteor Mash. Um, Earthquake is his last move. Now that he sees that, he have, that I have the Rocky Helmet, he goes for Earthquake instead. But now, the seriously, the damage has been done. I had all three layers of spikes and my Stealth Rocks. And he's at around half HP, uh, maybe more like 65. Uh, he just goes for a bullet punch. And here's where I find out his moveset. I could have locked into Earthquake, but I was really afraid of Jolteon being Air Balloon Jolteon. And so I lock into Zen Headbutt instead. Now, for those of you who haven't used Ditto, of course, when you transform into an opponent's Pokemon, all of your moves get five PP. So I only had five Zen Headbutts to use here. I've used up two taking out the Mega Metagross, which is a huge sigh of relief for my team. Donphan is going to come in here. His sturdy gets broken by the entry hazards. And Zen Headbutt actually is going to be able to finish it off from there just because of all the attack boost that his Meta Mega Metagross were passed from the Scallopede. Scallopede comes out and unfortunately Scallopede has Protect. So he's going to burn that fourth Zen Headbutt against a Protect. 
and I figured, eh, might as well just go for the fifth one and take another knockout. But, uh, even after the speed boost, of course, he passed more speed than that. But I ended up missing that uh, Zen Headbutt against Scolipede. And so Scolipede actually gets a chance to pass some speed out to his Jolteon, which is pretty annoying. Um, because he wouldn't have been able to pass that speed and he would have a dead Scolipede. But uh, that's okay. We are going to switch out here, go into my Zapdos. Depending on the type of Jolteon he is, I might be able to take some hits here. And he actually is just max special attack, but he is timid. So since he's timid, I actually thought he might be running modest since he passed the speed. Since he's timid though, um, we are going to be two at KO'd really by Thunderbolt. He goes for Shadow Ball, probably predicting me to switch into Ditto and um, try to take the Volt Absorb. And so on the next turn, I go, okay, I think he's going to overpredict again. So I just stayed in again. I could have switched into Ditto right there, transformed into Jolteon, and gotten the Volt Absorb. But Jolteon's going to end up going down to its own life orb and taking my Zapdos with it in a delicious double down. So that's unfortunate. Zapdos actually did a lot less with the Heat Wave than I expected it to, but that was a very defensive Zapdos because I was so worried about Mega Metagross and Kirin Black. Um, so here, I figured he was going to go back out in the Scallopede. Scallopede gets one more switch into Entry Hazards and he dies. Um, here I'm just going to keep on going for a U-turn even though my Tornadus isn't Scarfed, it's Life Warped. I figured if he went for Baton Pass, he might try to send it out to Sylveon and my Tornadus can't really touch Sylveon. But he actually Baton Passes into the Curum Black, so I could have just gone for Air Slash here and had a pretty good chance of KOing it with a Life Orb boosted Air Slash. Um, I was a little bit sick of missing a Hurricane, so I did go for Air Slash this week. Um, but Kurum, with Kurum in here, and he has the, the plus one speed, figured I'd go back out to Ditto. Uh, he can't come back and once Gallopede and pass any more speed around. So this is my chance to grab some of that speed. I can't lock into the Dragon Type move because he still has Sylveon in the back. So I just lock into Ice Beam thinking, okay, that should be enough to finish him off. But apparently he doesn't have a huge special investment on the Kurum. that's mostly physical. Because that doesn't really do much damage, and he's able to finish me off with a critical hit Earth Power. That's unfortunate, but I can easily come in here with my Mega Metacham. Fake Out will take out the Kyurem, and after all those entry hazards, Zen Headbutt will take out the uh, Sylveon too. It really is just a matter of if he has any type of defensive investment. If he's an offensive Sylveon, it's an easy KO. Otherwise, I kind of have to play around with number one, him protecting and getting wishes, and of course, Moon Blast or Hyper Voice. Hyper Voice will KO Mega, uh, Mega Metacham. Moonblast might be a 2 a KO if he's more defensive. So, um, he is going to come in here, go for Protect. He doesn't have Leftovers, but I do miss my <laughs> Zen Headbutt. Which, so I had two of those miss this battle. Zen Headbutt has 80% accuracy, not sure what's going on there. But I do hit the second one, and it finishes him off. Because that power, that pure power. So, that was an intense battle. Thank you very much, Sketchy, for battling me and, and letting me vet some of those feelings that I was having. Not feelings, I don't have feelings. Letting me vet some of those uh, um, issues that I had with losing to you in finals back in season two. Hopefully I will get a chance to fight him in finals again and then we can have that salty run back. But in the meantime, thanks for watching this battle guys. We are going up against Isaiah and the Minnesota Munchlaxes for next week. I hope you enjoyed this battle video and I'll talk to you later. See you later. Bye.